There are times you can agonize over a card and you simply can't find a game you absolutely love. That was not the case on Sunday. I'm telling you, literally, it took me 30 seconds to handicap Sunday's card, and there was that one game that just jumped off the slate, that one game where those little voices were screaming, bet me, bet me, bet me. And if you're a gambler, you know you do not ignore those voices. And that game, of course, I'm speaking of the Baltimore Ravens. I looked at that line. I'm looking seven points. I would have laid 21 points with Baltimore yesterday for all the reasons I laid out. If you got my play on Baltimore yesterday, easy 15 dime best bet winner. Nice way to start off the NFL season. But listen, it was an easy card yesterday. Look at the other plays, the games that I call the best of the worst, the games that I relegate to free pick status, the ones that I always say for one reason or another, they were slightly flawed. Those that I considered to be the best bets on the card, but I relegate, as I said, to free pick status. I gave you here on the video report, winners on the Cowboys, the Rams, the Chiefs, and if not for Washington, scoring with six seconds to go, it would have been a 4-0 sweep. But the the Eagles got backdoored. So a great Sunday. I also mentioned yesterday that there was that little oddball statistical quirk that I discovered about six or seven years ago that if you had that magical crystal ball and you were able to forecast the straight up winners of games in advance, sounds easy, doesn't it? That through the first 10 to 12 weeks of the season, you will find that they will cover it somewhere around a 92 to 95 percent clip. So, so far going into tonight's two games, 14 games played. The straight up winners went 10, 2, and 2 against the spread. I'm telling you, it's like clockwork. And we'll follow it here through the first couple of months of the season. Yesterday, the pushes, of course, Arizona and Detroit, and ending up in a tie. And the other push, the Chargers Colts game, falling right on that number of around six. The losers, the Eagles getting backdoored by the Redskins and the Seahawks, failing to cover that big post against Cincinnati. Now, You've got two games tonight. As I've always said, I am not a slave to a particular sport. I don't, just like on Thursday, find either one of these particular games that attractive from a betting perspective. So my best bet happens to be in baseball tonight. That doesn't mean a lot of other guys who, in fact, had wonderful uh, Sundays, don't have big plays. But, of course, the big featured promotion today is the final day that you can take advantage of the second biggest discount of the entire year, saving 27% on your total purchase price by using coupon code 27%, 27-P-E-R-C-E-N-T. It's the final day this coupon is available. And it's a mix and match coupon, which means you can use it for any combination of picks and or packages. The only stipulation, you've got to put everything in your shopping cart at one time. You've had a taste here of the weekend of who can make you some money. So if you happen to also be involved with a handicap or a long-term package and you want to extend that out further, you can do so using this 27% discount coupon. And if that handicapper in your package has an instant rebate, that is applicable as well. Should you have any questions, you can always uh, contact customer service. They'll help you out. One of the guys is off to a great start is Dwayne Connors, who is seven and one so far this season in football. With those eight picks, uh, one dollar betters have already made a little over forty nine hundred dollars. He has football winner number eight out of nine tonight. Top end unit, uh, 1,000 unit winner number five out of six and third straight to open NFL season on the heels of the Packers and the Ravens. It's on the Saints and Texans. And just like the other two, you get it for over half price off by using coupon code bankroll. Other discounts and promos are over on the home page. So with that being said, let's break down tonight's two games. Um, of the two games, the one that I like more it would be Houston, plus to six and a half. And of course, with that line at six and a half, I am absolutely buying up the half point. Anytime when you're getting that price, I'm buying up the hook on Houston. Now, when we last saw the Saints, we know what happened there. They were getting screwed by poor officiating and the lack of instant replay in the NFC title game. We saw a Saints team that was 13 wins a year ago, number one seed in the NFC, but a team that struggled a bit down the home stretch. Um, Saints have lost five straight season openers. I find that kind of interesting. Is it a statistical anomaly or is it something that we should be aware of here tonight? I do think they win this game, but I do like the changes that the Texans made uh, to their team here. 
I think the valuations that they made in terms of the trade acquisitions are kind of strange. That's what happens when you don't have a GM who is experienced with Bill O'Brien, the head coach, calling the shots in front of the front office position. I think they gave a little too much up. But listen, they went out. They bolstered the offensive line, which they had to, uh, especially since Deshaun Watson was sacked the league high 62 times last year and got hit 126 times overall. It did hurt that Lamar Miller suffered a season-ending knee injury a few weeks ago. But thankfully, they went out and got Duke Johnson from Cleveland, and they also picked up Carlos Hyde as well. So their running game certainly will be able to provide some mil uh, ground support. And uh, look, Duke Johnson is an excellent receiver out of the backfield, and Deshaun Watson will certainly take advantage of his pass-catching skills. So they improved the offensive line. They still have some talent coming into the backfield. They've got a good core of wide receivers. Defensively, I think the Texans still could step backwards with the loss of Clowney to Seattle. But they're going to put points on the board here. Now, the Saints, strong defense a year ago. But let's remember that two of their defensive tackles are going to miss tonight's game. One, Sheldon Rankins, who had uh, eight sacks a year ago, is injured. The other one, um, Onimata, is suspended. He had four and a half sacks. So you've got 12 and a half sacks along that defensive line that aren't going to be playing. You had a strong Saints run defense a year ago. You also had a strong Texans run defense a year ago. But I think the Texans run defense will be hindered a bit this season because of Clowney's absence. You had a New Orleans ground attack that was outstanding the past couple of years because you had the two men headed monster between Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara. But that ground attack, which was sixth in the league a year ago in productivity, well, Mark Ingram has been replaced by Latavius Murray. Is Murray going to be equal in terms of Ingram in his production? I don't know. Can't tell you. Listen, again, I think the Saints win this game, but I think it's going to be a high-scoring shootout, and I would rather take the Texans plus the points. Now, Denver and Oakland. We know what's happened with the Raiders off the field here of late. But I ask you this, with no Antonio Brown, you've got Tyrell Williams, who has caught 153 balls for 16 touchdowns the past three years for the Chargers. A good secondary receiver, suddenly elevated to the number one spot in the receiver core for Oakland. That's not his real primary job. That's not what he is. He's a number two guy. So Derek Carr's receiver core has suddenly been downgraded because of the knucklehead's departure. Um, they, being the Raiders, went out and drafted Josh Jacobs from uh, Alabama to bolster an anemic, and I think anemic is a charitable word to describe Oakland's ground game from a year ago, a team that was ranked 25th in the league in terms of its rushing attack each of the past two seasons. They went out and signed some veterans and drafted some talent with their first rounders to bolster, again, anemic would be a charitable word, a pass rush, which didn't exist last year either. Um, will that pass rush be able to generate any heat against Joe Flacco? key thing here. Will Joe Flacco be asked to do much against this Raiders team tonight? I don't think so, because the Raiders couldn't stop the run last year. And you've got Philip Lindsay and you have um, Royce Freeman, a strong one-two punch for Denver to move the chains and also control the clock. And I think that's the key here tonight. It also covers up some of the sins for Denver's defense. Denver, strong pass rush with Bradley Chubb and Von Miller. Couldn't stop the run, though, last year. So what Oakland's going to do tonight is going to come out here and try to establish the run using their new running back, Josh Jacobs, right? But Denver's going to try to minimize the time that Oakland's going to be on the field by establishing their own ground game and then letting Flacco establish a short passing attack, and then occasionally take chances down the field, managing the game clock. I like Denver minus the two and a half points. If the move line moves to three, I'm buying down the half point on the Broncos. Of the two games, however, I do like the Texans more. But again, neither one of these games I would put my own money on. That's the bottom line. Also be aware that Oakland's offensive line is going to be minus two veterans here at the start of the season, Richie Incognito and uh, Gabe Jackson for the first couple of weeks. So, 
I'm going to go with the Texans and with the Raiders as your, excuse me, the Broncos as your two complimentary plays here for Monday night. Of course, I cashed in with three out of four yesterday, and I gave you the Packers on Thursday night, so it's a nice start in the NFL on the heels of cashing with the Raiders, uh, Ravens as a best bet yesterday. Good luck, everybody, and talk to you again on Tuesday.